Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our presentation of how to ethically convert more callers into clients with Tiffany Poole, founder of AMP Attorney Consulting, also Attorney Market Power Consulting is the expansion of the acronym, and HCT, Hero Conversion Technologies. I'm excited to share uh, today with Tiffany as she is one of the most experienced uh, and charismatic speakers on this topic. She was responsible for helping build one of the largest consumer uh, legal practices in the country um, to the height of its success. And then after leaving that firm, founded Attorney Market Power Consulting and Hero Conversion Technologies. She helps her clients grow their law firms exponentially from every stage, whether it just be helping them with intake, conversion, document collection, client work, as well as marketing or sustaining their presence in their local market so that they don't lose that market share over time. She has the ability to choreograph the sales process within any law firm or practice area. And she'll be sharing all of those tips and tricks with us this afternoon. Tiffany, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you've got a jam-packed uh, schedule, so making time to share all of this information with us and our community is uh, an absolute pleasure, and we're so happy to have you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, white space on the calendar is the enemy, right? I like to have jam-packed <laughs> calendars. Absolutely. White space is the enemy. It I'm is. Sure the attorneys out there will agree. I mean, I think that's why you're coming to this uh, webinar today so that we don't have white space on our calendars. How can we get more people looking at us, more attention to us, more people through the door, more people having confidence and retaining us, albeit pay us, right? Um, right. I know all you guys are on mute, so I guess pressure's on me to do the talking. I think I got this. Uh, you know, Chelsea did a really amazing job, you know, doing the, the PR polished version of who I am uh, and why you should listen to me and what I do. But um, I'll give you the real life version of it. Um, I built one of the largest bankruptcy law firms in DFW, and it had nothing to do with, you know, um, where exactly we bought leads or, you know, how great our attorneys were, although they were. Um, it had to do with human to human conversion. What I mean by that is, you know, how do you get someone to uh, do what they should do, what's in their best interest and do it quickly, right? Um, I came from, from a Fortune 500 company before I ever even was in the legal industry. And I built a 300 uh, person sales team to sell Pizza Hut franchises. Um, you know, it, it was great. Uh, and I used my background in psychology on you know, how to get people to make buying decisions. But at the end of the day, uh, the legal industry is where I wanted to be because I can't get behind, I don't teach sales tactics, uh, you know, I have no interest in it. I can't get behind anything that isn't going to make someone's life better. Um, and I think in the legal industry, that's what we do. Um, it's not always fun depending on what practice you're in, but uh, at the end of the day, what you do is vital and helping someone, you know, bridge a gap to the next season in their life and to get through it as painless as possible. So now if you feel like you are, you know, the best uh, at what you do, then you are obligated. It is your responsibility to do self-development like webinars like this, learning how to get more people looking at you, more people in the door, because if you truly are the best, then you don't want them to go to John Smith down the street uh, who, isn't quite as good as you are. So this is self-development is an obligation. It's a responsibility for true, uh, you know, attorneys and, and entrepreneurs that believe they are the best. So I think uh, we probably have a good mix of those people uh, registered today. So glad to have you and glad to get going. Yeah, absolutely. Right, um, and we're going to jump right in. A couple of housekeeping notes. If you have questions during the session, this is a very interactive program. So feel free to enter them into the chat pane. My role here is going to be to help moderate that. So I'll either interrupt Tiffany and have her answer them right on the spot, or we'll save them for Q&A at the end. Also welcome you to share specific examples from your firm saying, hey, you know, this is the type of uh, area, of, area of law that I practice and this is the situation that I deal with or this is the reason why people cancel. How would you tackle that? She's got some great answers. And so uh, without further ado, Tiffany, take it away. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I think the first step is understanding um, what all this is about. So for me, it's about my commitment to furthering people's self-development. So I know that back in uh, when we had the partnership split, I could have gone and worked for another law firm and built that law firm up, but that's not where my heart is. You know, I truly believe in if, as much as I give is what I will receive. So that's why I host webinars like this to, to continue to, to give to people that are good attorneys that believe in what they do, but struggle with the business aspect of it. You know, I'm going to share my exposure, my experiences in building, you know, the largest uh, law firm in Texas and top 10% in the nation. I'm going to teach you uh, how not to make some of the mistakes that I made, some really costly mistakes in that growth. You know, a lot of what I'm going to teach isn't about magic pixie dust that's, you know, you know, 9.99. Um, it's about, you know, I did this and, and I failed and it cost me this much in a mistake and this is how I learned you know, the shortcut or the, the outcome that I should have gotten to much quicker than I did and without the expense that I did. So it's just that I've had exposure and experiences with building volume firms, not just uh, my own, but, uh, um, you know, over uh, a ton of law firms all over the nation. And, you know, to support whatever goal that you have in, in figuring out how you get there. So I know you guys have spent a lot of time a lot of focus, come on, a lot of money on learning your trade, um, whatever piece of law that you do, and, you know, being the best at it. And there hasn't been equal time probably uh, even available or focus and money spent on learning how to run, you know, a business. And I think that's where people really are drawn or attorneys are really drawn to me is the business side of it. How can I uh, do the human to human side of it, the, the buyer to the, to the company, the, you know, how do I get someone to, you know, find me and trust in me and then, you know, follow me the entire course or life cycle uh, of the case. So that's what, I, that's my commitment to you. That's what I'm here to do. So first step, you got to know where you are right now. Um, and I know that sounds so simplistic, but it's, it's the truth. And I find when I first meet a new client and we do our onboarding call, I find that they don't know. Um, and I say that with little judgment, uh, you know, no judgment, maybe a little judgment. <laughs> um, you have to know, you have to know your starting point. Um, and a lot of you will be right now listening to me say, oh, I know, I know, I know. Okay. You may. I'm going to challenge you on that. You should be able to answer two to 10 seconds after I ask the question, how many clients have retained you in the last year? How many have not? How many appointments have you had? Today, how many appointments do you have on the calendar, whether they be virtual or physical appointments? How many leads will you receive today? How many people show up? How many people will retain you today? If you can't quickly within, you know, conservatively 30 seconds answer that question or have someone that you can intercom that can in 30 seconds answer that question accurately, confidently, then you don't know your starting point. And I promise you this, this is the one guarantee I can make on this webinar today. Without the starting point, you will not be able to achieve any goal that you have in 2018. If you don't know where you're starting, there's no way you can possibly decide where do you need to go? What is your goal realistically in challenging yourself for the next year? So if you can't answer those two things, where am I now and where do I want to be in 12 months? Then there's no way you'll be able to achieve it. And that's a guarantee. There's zero emotion in that. It's a, it's a factual statement. So I challenge you, as soon as we hang up from this webinar, if you don't know the answer to these things, then you need to get them. And we'll talk about later, you know, how you can do that, how you can have some automated processes in place, uh, uh, you know, to quickly get those numbers or to have someone on your team feed them to you on a regular basis. But it's a requirement for the first step. Know where you are, 
and what you want. And then once you, once you know where you are and what you want, how do you get there? <laughs> I mean, there may be 70% on this call that know exactly where their starting point is, could quickly answer all those questions, they know exactly where they want to be realistically in 12 months with a challenge and, and answer those questions. The hard part they may be struggling with is, how in the world do I get there? It's not going to be by just solely working hard. You've probably been doing that from you know, law school to, to having your practice. Unfortunately, working hard and being talented or skilled or second and third into having a successful practice, a successful business. First is getting attention. I know, it, that sucks, that's a reality. It sucks that I could be an amazing attorney and I could work 100 hours a week and I could really be skilled and talented just naturally and through the education that I spent a lot of time, money, and focus on and still not have a thriving practice. Because the number one must have ingredient in being successful in all things is attention. It doesn't matter how great you are if nobody knows it. It doesn't matter how hard you work if there isn't anything to work on. You have to get the attention. So the first step in getting from your starting point to your end goal for 12 months is getting attention. What are your lead sources? If you can't name them off within 30 seconds, you're gonna hear me say that all the time. If you can't answer it in 30 seconds, you don't know. If you don't have someone that you can call in your team that can't answer it in 30 seconds confidently and accurately, you don't know. What are your sources? What are your lead sources? Well, some of you may be saying, I don't need to pay for lead sources. I'm amazing. I get referrals. That's great. I've met with thousands upon thousands of law firms. Solo, medium-sized, huge volume across the nation law firms. And the highest I've ever seen a referral uh, bring in revenue is 30%, the highest. So yes, you do. Should you have referral-based traffic? Absolutely. That is a reward for being great but it's not gonna build your practice and it won't sustain your practice and it won't grow your practice because there's a whole, and that's if you're on the top margin, 30%. There's a whole 70% that you don't, you don't have and that's gonna come in paying for lead sources. You need them. Don't be quick to discredit a lead source because it's junk leads. Through this webinar, I'm gonna tell you some things that need to be done when working leads and if you're not doing every single one of those things, Maybe it's not the lead, maybe it's you. I'm just gonna throw it out there, I'm just gonna be honest. That's what you're gonna get from me, is transparency. Lead sources, what are they in your industry, in your piece of the legal field? Who sells leads? How do you get leads? Is it PPC? Is it big lead gen companies? What is it? Who is it? Vet them. If you don't have time, get someone, but you need to know lead sources, you need to know the ones that you should be buying from, and you need to get on that this week. Now that you've got leads, how do I get people to live connect with me? How do I get people to talk to me? I can tell you a couple of things. Um, if you are the attorney and you're working your own leads, either by design or by choice, by design meaning, you know, it's just you, maybe one other person, and, and that's what you got to do. Believe me, I respect that. That's how I started uh, all of my businesses. Um, or by choice, because nobody can do it like you can do it, I can tell you this. Um, the 70% of leads that you're going to have to buy uh, to, to have a gross practice, there's going to have to be multiple calls made to get a live connect, and that probably doesn't make sense for you to be doing it whether by design or by choice. If it's by design, then you need to figure out how you redesign that design. And if it's by choice, then you need to figure out how you can de delegate and let go. And we'll talk about that later in this webinar.
but I can tell you this, you will not be successful with the leads that you get from lead sources if it is you calling them. And I will tell you this, I'll tell you why now. Because you won't be able to have the time to do the touches that need to happen to get a live connect. You'll have court, you'll have consults, you'll have casework, you'll have some sort of a life, maybe. There's no way that you're gonna be able to get them to convert yourself. You won't have the time to do the touches. So let's talk about whoever you do have to do this that does have the time, that's their primary role. And if you don't have that person now, or you're not sure who that person is on your team, later in the webinar, I'll tell you how you can figure that out. But whoever's gonna be doing it has to be doing multiple touch touches with high frequency. That's the only way that you're gonna get conversion. If I have a lead, uh, you know, someone that has either called in um, and not come and met with me for, you know, in the past or has set a web form, I need to be making multiple touches until I connect with them. Uh, also be sure, uh, one of the biggest mistakes I see happening is the attorney leaving what I call the tombstone message. You know the one. Hi, John. This is so-and-so attorney from so-and-so law firm. And uh, I know that you requested information on, et cetera. And I really think I can help you. I'm, you know, board certified, or I've been doing this 25 years, or if you'll look at my website, I have testimonials. Um, give me a call at this number, 1-800-blah-blah-blah-blah. That's the tombstone. And I'm either going to decide when I hear that voicemail if I even listen to it, because nowadays no one's listening to voicemail. Um, am I going to make that call back? Do I want to have that conversation right now? Or do I not want to have this conversation right now? So maybe instead, you leave a personal message of, hey, John, this is Tiffany. Give me a call when you get this. Here's the number. I just need to get a live connect. If you are getting leads right now, other than referrals, purchasing them uh, or having them, you know, organically through your website and you're not getting people to connect with you, it may be the amount of times that you're attempting connect. It may be the message that you're leaving to get them to call you back. Um, at the end of the day, you have to do whatever you have to do to get a live connect with someone so that you can show them you are the best or the person on your team can show them you are the best. Once we get a live connect, which is, you know, I would say probably 60% of the hard part. Once you get a live connect, what do you do in that call? And when I say you, I don't mean you, the attorney. It's who you primarily have you know, made this sole responsibility for this person. On that call, do what no other attorney is doing. Don't spend the whole time having your, you know, the person you've delegated uh, to talk you up or, you know, talk about how many years you've been doing this or why you're the best. People expect you to say that and so they tune it out and they almost discredit it because that's what you're shoving down your throat. Instead, find the questions that are, you know, important for your practice to get people to walk through the door. I call it the bucket system. It's got to be, what are the facts? Get them to open up the facts. Get the motivator, what triggered this? What's a win look like for them? Meaning, what is their expectation? What are they wanting? And then say the first step in making that happen is for them to come or get on the phone with you. So the first call, the biggest mistake once we get a live connect is that you just want to get them on the calendar. <laughs> and that's called order taking. Spend some time, not you, your person, really getting to know what are the facts, what is the motivator, and what are they wanting out of it? What is the win? What is the expectation to drive them to actually show up or actually make that call with you, actually consider you? Really, it's priming them for the retain. A lot of people can't meet with an attorney in one session and quickly be able to pull a trigger. Psychologically, it's too much is emotional phases that they have to go through to make that buying decision that they can't do it in one sitting. So you have to use this first call 
as the pregame. We all know what pregame is. We all went to college. Some of us did. The pregame. In that first call, they've got to be warmed up and start talking about the facts, the motivator, the win or expectation, and then get them to come in. If you have physical appointments, they have to be within 72 hours. This isn't just something that I pulled out of thin air. This is over 12 years of data. Any physical appointment that is booked or phone call appointment that is booked outside 72 hours has less than a 20% chance of showing up. Less than 20%. I own a call center, Hero Conversion Technologies, and believe me, I've got 25 agents and they test me all day long. So the one rule we have is the 72 hours. They don't even go to their, if they want approval to break that policy and that rule, they don't even go to their supervisor. They have to go straight to me, the owner. They have to personally text me, what is the reason? And then I put it on my calendar for the day that next Tuesday when that person's supposed to show up. And guess what? When that day comes, I say, okay, Stephanie, tell me, did John Smith show up next Tuesday, last Tuesday or today? No, nope, you're right, he didn't. This is why. It's just a basic human condition of I can tell you what I'm doing today, tomorrow, maybe the third day. Everything after that is just wishful thinking. So it doesn't matter if that person in your office is on the phone with them and they so badly want to, to, to meet with you and for you to fix their problem. If it's booked outside 72 hours, it does not matter the intention. They will not be there. Less than 20% chance. Life gets in the way. It's too much time from hanging up and walking through the door that anything and everything will get in the way of it actually happening. And depending on the legal field, the shelf life could be as short as same day. Criminal attorneys out there, if your people aren't doing straight phone consults or straight to your door as soon as they hang up, you're probably losing them to another attorney. The consult. If you're winning at getting leads in, you're winning at getting Live Connect, you're winning at live connecting with people and getting them confident that they want to pull the trigger and sign on the dotted line with you. And you're listening to this webinar going, hmm, I've got that. I'm good with that. I think we're great with that. I'm happy with that conversion. But you're still not retaining the amount of clients that you want. Maybe you're losing them at the consult. <clears throat> As attorneys, we like to attorney people. We like to get in a consult and have them tell you what their problem is and, and tell them all the ways that you legally and very effectively can make X, Y, and Z happen. And we think that that's what they want from us. The problem is we miss a lot of steps in between where we get them talking about exactly what they want how they want it to go down, what they're expecting from it. And we do a lot of overwhelming them with attorney jargon, not being very clear on guarantees because, hey, we can't ethically. And that's really what I want to spend some time talking about. This consult, there's a very specific structure of how the consult should go. I hope that you're gonna write this down. It doesn't matter what legal practice you're in, this structure works for every single consult, no matter if you do family, criminal, uh, bankruptcy, no matter what it is. Pen and paper, guys. So one, the intro icebreaker. I'll explain all this in a minute. Just write it down, trust me. Personal story, three, expectation phase, four, Q&A, five, options, six, 
money clothes. Seven, paperwork, homework. Now, another day, another time, I'll go in great detail on each one of those steps, but I'm gonna give you the high overview. Uh, so it gives you enough to kind of put it into your practice. And, you know, if you have questions at the end of this, we can dive into one more, you know, deeper than we do. But just because of, you know, the time that we have, I'll give you just some high level of each one of these. Every single consult, regardless of the legal field, has to be timed just like this. The content will be different based on your personality and based on uh, uh, the type of practice you do. But the structure for every single consult will be always the same. And it's about timing of people making baby decisions as they go through the consult so that at the end, they're signing. So the very first one is intro and icebreaker. It sounds like the most superficial piece of the consult and it's the most important piece of the consult. Because remember, this is about human to human interaction. Everyone says you never redo a first impression. It's not a cheesy cliche. It is a hard foundational truth of human to human interaction. Once someone quickly makes their mind up about you, it doesn't matter what you do years after that, it's very hard to break that logical mindset, almost impossible. So in the first 30 seconds, minute of to, to meeting your potential client, you are gonna either win that consult or lose them. Does that mean they wouldn't retain because they didn't? No. They may just be a buyer walking in, they don't really care because they need to get it done. I'm saying to control a retain, that first 30 seconds, to one minute is imperative. And it's got to have some personality and some humor in it. And it's got to speak to whatever the situation is. I can give you an example for uh, a bankruptcy attorney. Bankruptcy attorney. I go in the lobby. I, I meet John Smith. I say, hey, John, don't look so freaked out. I know you don't want to be here. Nobody wants to come and see me. Nobody wants to come and see a bankruptcy attorney. Don't worry. It doesn't hurt my feelings anymore. Let me give you uh, uh, some logic behind that example. One is her personality and humor, it fixes all. Immediately that person goes, oh, she gets it, I like her. Getting that I like her or I like him is the win. It makes any hard truth, you're gonna have to make them swallow in the next 30 minute consult, hour consult, a probability that they will be able to swallow it even if it's something they don't like because I like him, I like her. It sounds simplistic, but it's absolutely truth. I also, in that little intro icebreaker, said something about the pink elephant in the room. I said out loud, you don't like me, you don't wanna be here, doesn't hurt my feelings. That gets someone's body language to actually change because I said something that was in the environment out loud. You'll have to decide what that is for you in your practice and your personality, but at no time could you ever skip it. Personal story. Start by saying something about you when you get to your office and don't make it some marketing long spiel, all glossy and, and polished. People will hate it. It's only gonna work if it's genuine, if it's short, and it says these three things. Why you do what you do, You've gotta be able to constantly say that you're great at it. People don't come to attorneys that aren't confident. They don't, maybe they come to them, they don't hire attorneys, I should say, that aren't confident. And three, why does it matter to them? How is you doing what you do and you being good at it, how does it change their case, their results? How does it pertain to them? Remember, people don't care about you until you translate how you matter to them. That's just a human to human truth. Expectation phase is probably the one that attorneys in all legal fields and in all walks of life mess up or skip altogether. We wonder why at the end of the consult sometimes we didn't connect with someone, they didn't buy us. And it might be because they walked in, we looked at their facts, and we said, you have to do blah, 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 because this is my attorney opinion of blah, blah, blah. And we never stopped and said, what got you here? What do you want out of this? What's a win look like for you? 
what's worst case and best case. We never stopped and asked those questions for them to understand how they got here, what they wanted out of here, out of uh, the situation, and what was the worst case and best case result. It's funny, if you actually ask those things, that's the first five minutes of the consult, they will say out loud exactly what you need to do in order to get them to retain and sell them. And this is the most ethical way to do the consult. It's funny, some of the other guys, they look at webinars like this and they think, well, I don't need to learn how to sell someone. They're either gonna buy me or not buy me because it's the right thing or not the right thing for them, right? The problem is people that need attorneys are underwater in one sense or another. And they're not thinking clearly and they have high emotions and they're scared and they dislike attorneys because everyone hates attorneys. So what I have to be able to do is not sell them, but I have to be able to communicate with them in a way that gets them to open up, to talk to me, to let me understand what they want out of this, what has happened, what's fueling it, what's their worst case, best case, so that I know what I need to do to make that happen for them and help them through this situation. That's the most ethical way you could ever do a consult, but most of the guys never ever do that. They're too busy telling clients or potential clients what needs to happen for them because my law degree says that's what needs to happen. Expectation phase is three points. How did you get here? What needs to happen? What do I need to fix for you? Or what is your win? And give me the range of best case and worst case. The best relationships, both business and personal, are based off clear communication on what is expected and what is the worst case and best case scenario so that we know the range that we need to live in. You should be doing that in your consults. That's the best way to have a relationship. You're gonna have this client. There's not a more intimate relationship than attorney and clients. That's why there's privilege. So if you don't have an expectation phase in your consult, at the very beginning, as soon as we hang up in this webinar, that's the first thing. If, I, if you don't take anything else from this entire webinar, that's the one thing that you need to insert into every single consult. Any associate attorney you have with you, any fellow attorney you know, you should be teaching this to them, the expectation phase. All right, so next is the Q&A, and guess what? That's where most of you guys start. Most of you guys, and come on, you know, it's all, anonymous here. You don't have to lie to me. Most of y'all start here at the Q&A. So-and-so client walks in and you start q and for 15, 20 minutes. What, you know, what is this? What is that? Some questionnaire they filled out in the lobby or online, right? The facts. The problem is it doesn't matter how, you know, analytical the personality of the potential client, people still base decisions not on facts, but how they feel about the facts. Every walk of life, no matter how emotional and uh, non-emotional they are, they still base their decision on how they feel about the facts, not facts. But you guys usually start Q&A with just the facts. So instead, you see where it's placed after intro, icebreaker, personal story, and the expectations. Now it's appropriate to talk about facts, the Q&A piece. And this is you just asking whatever you need to know so that whatever questionnaire you had them fill out, uh, uh, doesn't tell you on their case or their potential case. In the Q&A, no matter what legal field you're in, if you don't have in your questionnaire now, you need to add it in. I don't care what legal field you're in again, in your questionnaire or in the console itself, but I would like it written on a questionnaire as well. In the Q&A, Another vital piece of the Q&A that we don't squeeze it for, we don't really use it as effectively as we should, is budget. Whatever legal field you are in, it is appropriate to be asking budgets. What do you make? Do you work? Are you married? Do you have kids? What do you pay out? What is your expenses? Regardless of the legal field, it is appropriate. 
They should be on your questionnaire. They should be asked in the Q&A. And in your head, in the Q&A, you should be developing how you propose you get paid. And I would not leave the Q&A without doing that. Here's why. Most attorneys say, well, I just say my fee is this. And we'll get to the money closed in a minute. But most attorneys just say my fee is this. And you either can pay it or you can't. You know, oh, you can't, okay, call me when you can when you find the money. How is that ethical? How is it ethical to have someone spend marketing dollars to get someone in your door to take 45 minutes of their time, 30 minutes of their time, and then at the end say, okay, great, if you want me to do that for you, it's going to be $6,000, it's going to be $10,000, it's going to be $2,500. How can you pay that? And they, they, they go, well, I don't know, I can't. Okay, call me when you can. How is that ethical? In the Q&A, there is no skill in, in getting someone to understand how you can solve their problem through the legal field. There's some skill, not much. Your real skill is being able to show them how they can afford it. When someone needs an attorney, it nine times out of 10 was not something that was planned. They didn't save up for six months for that extra amount of money to need you. Usually it was an unexpected thing in their life or a semi unexpected thing in their life that they didn't, you know, nine times out of 10 have just extra laying around to fork over to you. So in the Q&A, it is your job, it is your ethical obligation and duty to figure out for them because they won't. Because remember, they're highly emotional right now. They're very confused, no matter what it is, to figure out through their budget what they can do. And be able to then, at the money close, which we'll get to in a minute, effectively communicate so that they don't have sticker shock of my fee is. So Q&A, if you're not doing that, you should be. Options. Take a moment to give them all of the options and to tell them what those options look like and the probability of outcome on those options. It is important that we don't give a guarantee, but if you are good at where you, at what you do, then you know probabilities. So give options. Don't tell them what they have to do. Don't tell them what they should do. We think that that's what they want from us. It's not. No human likes to be told what they have to do. No human likes to be told what they should do. Humans like to be told, what are my options? What do those options look like and consist of? And what is the probability of outcome on each option? So make sure that you don't have just a one option consult, you have to do this, you should do this. Make sure that you weigh every option they have, walk them through what that one looks like and what the outcome looks like, the probability of it. Once you get them to buy an option, it also helps them to be able to make a buying decision right there and ethically be able to pull the trigger right there because you've done the due diligence with them. They don't need to leave and say, well, is there another way that I could get this outcome that he didn't tell me about or she didn't tell me about? Maybe I need to go do another consult with five other attorneys to figure out if there's another option he didn't consider or know about or, or have you know, the mindset to tell me about. If you do it while they're captive in your office and you walk them through every single option there is on that type of case, then they don't have to leave you. Think about it, internet research, see five other attorneys, because they feel solid and good that you exhausted everything there was so that they can make a sound decision. Once they do the money close, here's where you say, hey, John, today you walked in with so-and-so problems, and the last 30 minutes we found an option that, you know, will have a high probability of fixing so-and-so problem. Um, this is how I propose we get started. I know that you have blank, so let's get retained for $1,500. And then I know that you get paid on the 1st and the 15th, so let's go ahead and put you on auto payment uh, to, to pay the rest of that retainer, you know, uh, $500 uh, on the 1st and $100 on the 15th. Whatever you learned in the Q&A, you should be proposing to them. Because then at that time, we're not going back and forth on could I find it cheaper? Can I afford it? 
can I need to go find and, and think about it and, and find the money? Now you're just in an organic conversation about, oh, there's no way I could do 1500 a day. Okay, well, you know, I'm not in the business to make money up here or it doesn't exist or I probably wouldn't be working. <laughs> so let's go back. You know, we talked about your budget earlier today. Let's go back to that, that sheet of paper and let's figure out what you can do. Now it's not that I, I'm not doing it. It's how much will I be doing today? How much will I be doing later? And then paperwork is simply the paperwork. We use the retainer and uh, paperwork to, to do our, you know, to assume the sale. And it really is about, that's just the paperwork. Everything that you do with the other person is through communication and paperwork is paperwork. Keep it just as paperwork. Don't use it as tools to make people sign. Don't use it as tools to, to you know, get the conversion, to get the clients. Um, make sure that, you know, when you go through the retainer that you talk like you would talk to your friend, like a normal person, stop talking like an attorney and make them feel comfortable and, and don't, don't skip parts. Make sure that you thoroughly go through it. Uh, the expectation is now turning over to you now that they're hiring you. So make sure you're clear on what the expectation is. Don't be uncomfortable about it. Be thorough. People will feel better about it. They'll feel more confident in you. Um, so yeah, that's the consult. If there's any piece of whatever I just talked about for the last 30 something minutes, 40 something minutes that you're not doing, and, and let me say, and you're not exactly where you want to be with your bottom line, with how many clients retain you, how you feel about the direction of your practice. If you're, there's any unhappiness about that, any room for growth or improvement, and you're not doing anything I just talked about, take one thing and start executing. How many times have you gone to a webinar? Hey, I'm guilty because I'm a human too. And really latched onto a concept or a thought or an idea or a task. And then hung up and you had a consult immediately after, you had lunch immediately after, you had a trial after, you had a big case after, and you didn't ever execute. And I gotta say there's some responsibility probably on the person in the webinar, but there's also some responsibility on you guys on not having action items. So that's what we're gonna do. If there's any room to improve or change your practice, I want you to look at the different steps we talked about. First step, do you know where you started? Do you know where you wanna go? How to get there? What are your sources? Who could be your lead sources? What are you doing to get Live Connect? Once you get a Live Connect, what does that call sound like? Are you just using it to get an appointment on the calendar? Or are you using it to prime them for the retain? to get them ready to meet with you to make a buying decision when they meet with you. The consult, is there any piece of that structure that you're not doing in your consult that you should be doing? Any of those things, I say, take this recording, take PowerPoint, take your notes, and just highlight one thing that you're gonna do this week, and the next week, the next thing. And if you don't have the time, and that's a true reality, I deal with AMP Consulting, that's all I do every day, all day long, is meet with attorneys that have the ambition, have the drive, have the want to, have the work ethic for growth, but the reality is they don't have the time. They're working 70, 60, 100 hours as it is inside their business, inside their firm. They don't have the time. Then delegate. Find someone like me. Find someone inside your law firm that you can delegate tasks to, that you can say this one thing we're going to start doing, this, se this second thing we're going to start doing. And Tiffany, we do have a question from the audience. Sure. Uh, what was the second point in the expectation phase? And then we'll jump into yeah, recruitment. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and I'll go over all three just to, to clarify. So one, how did you get here? So what's the storyline that brought them? Not how do they find you on Yellow Pages? No. How, how did they get there? What's the storyline that got them in this current situation? Two, what are they wanting out of this? What is their win? What are they Expecting, right? You need to be able to clearly say, John, at the end of all this, what does a win look like for you? What are you needing me to do for you? We get scared asking that because what if they say something that's not realistic? Well, I'm scared if you're not asking it and they have it in their head, something that's unrealistic. You agree? So 
What does a win look like for them? What are they expecting out of it is number two. And then number three um, is be able to, to reaffirm, you know, the worst case and, and best case scenario so that you know the range that you can live in. That's also going to gauge how you pull them back if there is an unrealistic expectation, expectation um, and where you can push them if they're, they're thinking too low, right? Does that answer the question? Yes. Thank you. Cool. And we're going to move into to recruitment and some examples on metrics before uh, we dedicate some time at the end to Q&A. Yeah, absolutely. So everything that I just gave you is really on you to set up the structure, but it's on you to find someone to do the calling the lead sources, doing the live connect, doing that initial call so that you can worry about, you know, get, you know, buying the leads and, and doing the console and running your business and consults and, and trial and, and court and et cetera. So how in the world do you do that? If you're one person, if you're one person shop, man, you better find some money. You better, uh, you know, skip out on, on uh, the luxury car for six months so that you can hire someone. It's, it's not, it's not, there's not an option. You will never grow if you don't have this person in your firm. If you're a medium size or a large person or a large, large law firm, then you may already have someone there that you need to make solely responsible for this. That means they can't also do paralegal work. They can't also run and get your coffee. Like this person, all they do all day long is this role. It's their primary responsibility. So if you don't have them, you're going to have to recruit them. This is what AMP does all day, every day for, for attorneys, law firms all over the nation. But I'm going to tell you how I do it. <laughs> okay. So... People don't like to hire people because it sucks. Uh, people suck. The process sucks. It's time consuming. I don't have the time. We end up making rush decisions because we just have to fill a hole. And uh, then that person is a nightmare. And then we have to do the cycle all over again. So people hate it. And it's just because we're not doing it right. We're just not. So let me tell you how you can recruit someone if you don't already have them in your firm to do this job and how you can do it painlessly. Make them do the work. Make technology do the work for you. It's amazing. So this is what you do. You post an ad like this. You can even copy and paste this. Feel it, I don't care. I have, I have zero trademark on this. <laughs> Take this, post it, tweak it for what you're looking for. This one's just, this is one specifically for lead converter, which is what we've talked about today. Um, post it. And you're going to put in a phone number that is a Google voice number. And what happens is instead of getting 500 resumes in one hour that you're never going to sift through, or you're just going to pick one and, and, and pray, um, instead, you're going to have a Google voicemail box that's going to be full of five people, not 500. Because only five out of 500 are actually going to read the post and are actually going to call and leave a voicemail and answer the questions that you've, you've asked them to do. And good, because I don't want the other 495 on my team that won't read a post that they're trying to, to make a career out of, that won't do the steps on, if you want to be hired, this is what you need to do. I don't want those people on my team. I want the five that will do it. So then you don't have to look through resumes. You don't have to do anything but post the ad and check a voicemail. And guess what? 30 seconds of listening to a voicemail, your gut is going to tell you yes or no. Tells you no, delete. Go to the next one. Says yes, guess what? You press call back. Boom. You have a phone interview. It's that fast. You can have someone picked out within one to two days with doing one to two calls and maybe one interview. That's how easy it is. This really boils down to how we run our business, how we do all things. Effort is overrated. We put a lot of work and effort into things and, and get very seldom results because we're not doing structurally proven the right way. Here's just an example with recruiting. Most traditional recruiting, you post an ad, you get 500 resumes, 
you painfully go through them, deleting, deleting until you're blind. And then you print off the ones you like, and then you call them, and then you get interviews, and you've got someone in there, and they've been in your office for 30 seconds. Of the 30 minutes, they're going to waste your time, and you know that they're not the right person. So instead, you've got this. Post, steal that, uh, that uh, text, post it. Uh, I gave a list of places you can post and the cost for those places. And then you make them do a Google number. They'll you know, leave that message listen to it, you'll know in 30 seconds if they're a good, a good person for your team or not, they'll fit the culture or not, be able to do the job or not. Look, their, their job is going to be on the phone. If they, you know, suck selling you in 30 seconds on a voicemail, then uh, they're probably not going to be a good fit for this position. So then fast forward real fast. Once you have hired someone, invest some time in training them, compensating them, this is a big thing. Ethically, uh, compensation is hard in law firms, but it's only hard because we get uh, put in a box and we don't really think through it. There's nothing wrong with compensating someone. Just make sure that you're doing things that aren't always about getting someone to pay you money. Not because, you know, that's not, you know, the best way to do it. It's because it's not the right way to do it. People need to be motivated on being great for your firm all around. So I've given some examples of some tiers and how to set it up, and even some examples of what, how to motivate them and what amount it should be. Um, feel free to use it, um, and you can have questions about it at the end of this as well. Training, so important. Uh, a lot of times we hire the right people, but we don't invest time in them. We don't set expectations with them. Uh, we don't record their calls. Uh, and, and help them get better at what they do. We just kind of say, do your job, and then we put them on an island by themselves. Spend as much focus and time and investment in your people as you do your potential clients, and you'll have a thriving practice. I've given you an example of what this position, what their role should look like Monday through Friday. Uh, again, please feel free to use it. It's something that has worked for me in, in building uh, not only uh, uh, a practice inside, you know, in being inside a practice, but law firms all over the nation. Um, and it still works for me. It also works for every intaker I have in my call center. Um, so it's a proven structure for the day. Face people not on what they're doing. Look, if you catch someone Facebooking in your law firm, our first reaction is to get mad. In this position, let it go. Let them Facebook for five minutes. Let them be a human. I don't care about the effort that they put in as much as I care about the results. And that's why reporting is so important in your firm. Back in the beginning of this webinar, we talked about knowing where you're starting and knowing where you want to be in 12 months. If you don't have that reporting in place, you need to get it in place. Here are some uh, examples of reports that you should be looking at on a weekly basis. Here's a conversion report. It's every lead, what happened to it, from set, show, retain. If you're not looking at this weekly, you have no idea what you're doing and what you should be doing. You don't know where the floor or the ceiling is, you can't get to either. Here's a template of what marketing stats for um, uh, 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 the, the entire firm should be. So you always have previous week, current week and same week last year. A lot of times you'll get stuck in whatever numbers are for a particular week and you're not, you could say that's an amazing week or it's a bad week and it, both could be false. You don't know unless you have what I call the bookends. Bookends are important when you're looking at stats. You have to know what that previous week was, what the current week is, and what the same week last year was so that you have relative perception of what those stats are telling you so you can then behave based on those stats. I hope that makes sense. If not, ask questions at the end of it. It's always think you have to have bookends to make the, the stats relative so the number makes sense to you. Here's a monthly marketing sheet. So weekly, you're looking at those stats, the two last slides, and monthly, you're looking at something like this. This happens to be for, for a bankruptcy one, so you'll have to you know, change the content based on your legal. But the, the structure is the same. You have your month to date, and then you have your goal and your percentage of that goal. So 
when, when you lay out your 12 months, you know where the goal is for that month, and then you know what actually happened month to date, and that'll tell you, was I 50% of my goal, 100%, 200%, and then you can change the next month's goal based off that percentage. Technology, my friends. Chelsea is probably the biggest expert on technology. Um, if you're not doing the buyer's guide, when we hang up, you need to be on the buyer's guide. You need to be looking at that. I do. <laughs> um, technology it makes is ever seen. <laughs> it, it, just, it just makes all the reporting possible. Exactly. I mean, everything I just talked about is not feasible. It could so everything I talked about could be amazing and earth shattering, and 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 winning steps to to be a volume high profit margin margin uh, uh, business. But if you don't have technology, none of it's actually realistic to get done in a day. It's just impossible. So I like Pinger for texting, it's free and it goes through the computer. So it, the end user feels like it's personal through you know, a phone, uh, but you have it on a, uh, on a computer so that ethically you can have those notes to copy and paste over to, to the file. Ring Central I use for calling out so that I can have marketing uh, reports on number of calls, um, also to record if that's available in your market. Um, so that I can do training on call critiques and get response so that, you know, the million touches that I want to do, although this has even changed since we did the slide, uh, there's autopilot and, and Chelsea, what's the other one? Uh, there's active campaign, autopilot, uh, get response, there's yep. infusion soft. I mean, it really depends on the level of budget, but there is absolutely something available for everybody. Right. And um, I know you use uh, tape a call for call recording, yep. and and you can also leverage some of these case management systems, such as Lexicata or Practice Panther uh, or another case management system that is integrated with marketing tools. So, you know, one of the follow ups to today's conversation is, you know, really getting the system in place as Tiffany has outlined and the technology helps make that possible so that it's not all manual reporting. Um, and, you know, just a, a few closing remarks here, you know, Tiffany has offered to help audit what your current conversion process is. We do have some time um, for further Q and A uh, as we near the end of today's session. Beautiful. I hope you got something out of this. Um, any questions? Yeah, everybody, please feel free to enter uh, questions into the chat box. And Tiffany has also offered to do uh, free follow-up strategy consultations. I know uh, recently you just did something for our community, um, Tiffany. It was you know finding uh, the the three things that you either need to fix or create, or was it one thing to fix or create in 2018, as well as auditing yep. conversion processes. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I think it, every new year you have an opportunity, actually every new month, you have a new opportunity to say, okay, what needs to be fixed and what needs to be created? Um, and I always make those two different things. So there could be a hole in the firm or a process or a system that needs to be fixed. And there can be something that needs to be created that doesn't already exist that can continue growth for the firm. So I really build my own businesses on that. Uh, all my clients and law firms through AMP Consulting, uh, we work on that on a monthly basis. Uh, and so you should be as well as you go into uh, this next month, you know, what can you fix and, and what can you create for growth? And I, you know, I, that's something hard when you're inside of it. Sometimes you have to have someone that's on the outside looking in to know what those two things are or know what the most important fix and, and create things are. And that's something that I do offer um, at no cost. And again, what it does for me, because I'm transparent, is it exposes me to more things. The more problems you tell me about, the more things that, you know, uh, I help you create to um, just make me stronger with my AMP clients. So that to be transparent, that's what I get out of it. I'm getting exposed to more and giving you something that's valuable at no cost. So we do have a couple questions from the audience. You mentioned text messaging and you know I've seen firsthand, I've been able to visit your call center in Dallas and your agents are actually uh, booking appointments and confirming appointments over the weekend or you know at night uh, with text messaging as being the primary, is it your primary vehicle? No, ab absolutely. So 
so we do text and call, and it's important that you do both. Um, but yeah, uh, we do both, and it's Monday through Sunday uh, because I mean that's when humans exist. You know, unfortunately, your clients aren't always the most engaged Monday through Friday, nine to five, because they may have jobs or they may have uh, you know responsibilities nine to five. Your people may be more engaged when it's eight o'clock at night, and that's when their brain kind of won't shut down or on Sunday or, or whatever that may be. So you need to be thinking about where is the most engagement going to happen and that's where I need to be accessible to it. That may not be realistic for your law firm. It's why hero conversion technologies exist in the first place. <laughs> because it does exist in my world, you know, because I've, I've designed it that way. And a follow up to that question, um, when even when booking appointments within a 72 hour window, the beginning of the week seems to have higher no show mm -hmm. rates. What is your recommendation um, for tackling that problem? Oh, absolutely. So Monday and Friday. So Monday morning, um, you know, everyone has these amazing intentions. Think about you personally. You go uh, on Monday. I'm going to do that. Oh, first thing Monday. How many times have you said that? First thing Monday, right? Or Friday when I'm off or Saturday because I'm not working. Those are the best intentions. And that's when we usually get appointments booked because that's when people feel like they have the best intentions. The problem is we're human. And Monday morning, that long list I had for myself, it ain't happening. My brain just cannot even compute. It cannot happen. I'm rescheduled. I can't do it, right? And I'm a driven individual. So, and not everyone is driven. And that's still true. Friday afternoon, everyone's spent. I call it happy hour, happy hour brain. So this is what I do. I mean, realistically, well, but I can't not book. I mean, that cuts so many hours out of my, you know, uh, availability. And that's money out of my pocket and, and opportunities that I miss. So what you do instead is, if I'm going to book a Monday morning or a Friday afternoon, I have that person be transparent. I said, look, John, look, it's Monday morning. I'm human too. We all have great intentions Monday morning. But I'm telling you, John, at 10 o'clock on Monday, the last thing you're going to want to do is be in my lobby working on this with me. I'm going to tell you, do it anyway. Because come Monday afternoon, we could have actually solved the problem or be one step closer to solving the problem. So here's the magic to answer the question directly. The magic is we need to start saying things that exist. We get scared to say, well, a lot of people don't show up on Monday. No, I'm not going to put in that delivery, but we're scared even to, to put in, that in the conversation. Why? It's a, it's a truth. The, the more you speak truth, the more that you can change them, if that makes sense. So just say it transparently. And here's the magic of it. On Monday, when he has the doubt, or, or not the dragging the feet of coming, he's gonna hear your words in his head. And you know what was great about human nature? We wanna prove people wrong. Oh, she said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wanna come. I, I don't, but I'm, I'm gonna be there. You know, I'll, I'll give you an example. My mother will tell me, you know, well, we have this family gathering, you know, I know you're always late, you know, just it'd be nice if you weren't late. Man, I wanna be there 15 minutes early just to tell her, look, I wasn't late. It's a human nature thing. So use it to get the outcome that you want. Excellent. Thank you. And um, just to, to run through one more time, um, what was the number two under personal story? Person, for a personal story? Okay. So personal story has three part, parts. One, why do you do this? So out of any other piece of law or any other job, you need to be able to quickly say why you do it, and it has to have a personal reason behind it. Uh, two, you need to be able to confidently in your personal story say out loud, and I'm great at this. And that is scary because that's an uncomfortable thing. We are taught to be modest, to be humble. Man, let me tell you something. That's the most, you know, misused uh, word in, in this generation right now is being humble or modest. Look, I'm not coming to you as an attorney if you can't say out loud. If you can't even say out loud to me, your potential client, that you're great at this, then I doubt that you are. Look, if you can't say and believe that you are the best, then I doubt that you are. So number two, you have to be able to say point blank and confidently, and I am great at this. And then the third part of the personal story is, 
Why does it matter to you, John Smith? Because I don't care why you got into family law. And I don't care that you're great at it if you can't tell me how it matters to me and my case. Excellent, thank you. And I know we are just a few minutes over, but we have, we're gonna hang out for just a few more minutes. If anybody else has any questions, please enter them in. I do encourage everyone who attended or is watching the recording later on um, to take advantage of Tiffany's offer to just hop on the phone 15 or 30 minutes with her will usually, uh, I mean, I call her for my own business. So 15 or 30 minutes will either help you, you know, uh, assess and, and make a breakthrough in your business or identify some low hanging fruit that can help you improve your numbers in the next 30 days. And that is no uh, exaggeration at all. So her number's up on the screen. You can text her, uh, you can email her at the uh, email address that you see here. Take advantage of that uh, free consultation or that free chat. If you're interested in uh, services related to hero conversion technologies or the call center that is uh, 24 seven, is that right, Tiffany? Yep, 24 seven. 24 seven spe uh, specifically um, focused on lead conversion for her law firm clients. They act as extensions of um, your team, your email addresses, phone numbers, all of that um, is kept specific to your law firm. So if you have any questions about that, you can reach her on the number above. At the email address that you see on the screen, we will be sharing the slides and the recording of today's presentation. Thank you, Tiffany, so much for everything that you have shared with us today. These are incredibly valuable resources and ones that I know that you've developed over more than a decade now um, and, and it could be charging thousands and thousands of dollars for. So thank you for sharing those with us for free. We'll circulate the slides and the recording via email to everyone who shared their afternoon with us. We really, really appreciate your time and take advantage of uh, just a quick chat with Tiffany, uh, preferably within the next couple of weeks while the information is still fresh in your mind. Thanks so much. Absolutely. And Go be great, guys. Be great. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you in class again soon. Bye.